supporting aware of life and uh, um, Captain Lovell, I appreciate this uh, opportunity to, to be with you. Estamos aquí con el Capitán James Lovell de la Armada de Estados Unidos y Comandante, partícipe de, de las misiones de Gemini 8 y este, perdón, de Apollo, uh, Apollo 8 y también el famoso Apollo 13, that uh, part of the Apollo 8 uh, program and uh, our mission and also the infamous Apollo 13. Uh, not many people realize this, but uh, you and your crew were the first human beings to leave space uh, in Earth's orbit and to actually see Earth in its full beauty. How was that for you, sir? Well, I think of my space experience, Apollo 8 was perhaps the, uh, uh, the one I uh, remember the most, the one that I think was the most important. Uh, it was the first flight to the moon. It uh, checked out the navigation and the communications all the way out there. Uh, it was the first time humans had seen the far side of the moon uh, and the first time also to see the earth as it really is. How was that experience? I mean, when you, did you know that, uh, I mean, personally to be talking to you and be the first uh, Spanish speaking fellow to do it, I mean, to do this uh, interview to me, it's, uh, it's beautiful and historic, so beautiful that I forgot to grab my mic here, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> your, your mic it sounds, sounds, sounds great. Uh, and, uh, and, um, uh, well, how was an experience to know that you were the first one to see something that no other human being has ever seen before? It, it was uh, unusual in many aspects. Uh, it was uh, that we had arrived at the moon to go into lunar orbit on Christmas Eve, which was, uh, you know, a, a screenwriter could not have done a better job of programming this flight. It was uh, the fact that uh, that uh, the, uh, in this country, uh, there was a lot of bad things going on. I mean, the Vietnam War was still going on and we had riots in the streets, but we ended the year of 1968 uh, on an upbeat by being able for three people uh, for the very first time to go all the way to the moon and come back safely. Exactly, and um, um, now you remind me that it was on Christmas Eve, you read that beautiful passage from, uh, from Gemini, uh, from uh, Gen the book of Genesis. <coughs> And uh, like you said, I mean, it could have been written in a script play and it was so, and uh, you, in a sense, you were an ambassador of mankind and uh, that must have been special as well, no, sir? That's true. When we realized that we'd be in lunar orbit uh, at, the, at around Christmas Eve, we tried to think of something very appropriate to say. Mm -hmm. And it was actually a person from the news media who had suggested that we read the first 10 verses of Genesis from the Old Testament, which is basically is the, or is basically the uh, foundation of most of the world's religions. You know, uh, Christianity plus Judaism plus uh, uh, Islam. We yeah. have many, many kids, uh, youngsters, high school, junior high school, elementary school, wanted to be like you guys. And uh, I'm wondering, uh, who was you here? Who did you want it to be like when you grew up? Oh, see, when I grew up, we didn't have a space program. Uh, but my uncle was a very early naval aviator. And so I wanted to go into aviation, which I eventually did. I became a naval aviator. Uh, but I also was very interested in rockets. And we had a, a person in this country uh, Dr. Robert Goddard, who was a pioneer in liquid fuel rockets, and I read all about what he had done. So I, I was torn between becoming a naval aviator and becoming a rocket engineer. And you went to the Naval Academy. And went to the Naval Academy. And then became a midshipman. And uh, I mean, I, um, as a, um, I know that at a certain point in the Naval Academy, it's, it gets pretty tough. And it, you questioned yourself. I mean, it happens to everybody whether you're going to be able to make it or not. I was wondering what was the most uh, difficult uh, time at the Naval Academy? Would you say, "Oh no, this is not. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm leaving. I'm, I'm ringing the bell," you know? Or which one is the part that uh, I'm always also your fondest memory of the Naval Academy? Well, the the the, the low point in any midshipman is going through plebe here and uh, wondering whether it's really worth it or not and, and getting you know, harassed from the upperclassmen and all. <laughs> but once you start into the upper classes, upper uh, years, uh, it gets to be more and more uh, 
interesting uh, and more challenging. Uh, and uh, so by the time I graduated, uh, you know, I was quite happy uh, and also to be selected to go down with the first group for uh, flight training. Mm -hmm. I actually spent the summer after I graduated at the academy teaching. What did you teach? I taught seamanship well, for the oh. plebes that were coming in, which I enjoyed anyway. I mean, it was, it was a, uh, very interesting. Well, you weren't mean to the poor guy. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, how did you, uh, uh, I mean, so you graduated Naval, uh, from, uh, from Naval Academy. I believe that uh, you were uh, part of uh, the Korean, the, the Korean War was it? Was, was no, I, well, I got my wings, my uh, Naval Aviation wings, uh, and was sent out to a squadron on the West Coast, but the war had already stopped. Okay. The war had ended, and I deployed out into the Pacific, into that area around Japan and Korea and that area, just after the war ended. So I never did get into the Korean War. Thank God. Yeah. And um, um, how, um, what was, uh, how do you decide to get into the space program? Well, like I mentioned, I'd always been interested in rockets. Mm -hmm. And after my tour, uh, in the Navy, and I had two tours, one teaching people to fly new airplanes that we got. Mm -hmm. uh, then I was assigned to the test center at uh, Patuxent River, where I started testing airplanes. Mm -hmm. And about that time, which was about 1958, uh, the, a group of people that used to belong to the old NACA, which was a, a government uh, agency that helped the airlines develop new airfoils and things of this nature, became a NASA. And their job was to now go into space because we had begun to have sort of a, a, a contest between the old Soviet Union and ourselves. They had things, they put up Sputnik and that sort of, you know, the figured out why we didn't do it. So we had people that were starting to do the same thing. And they started a program called the Mercury Program. Mm -hmm. And they needed people to put in it. And uh, President Eisenhower suggested uh, test pilots. And so I was one of the people that uh, they looked at and selected. So I went into the, uh, the, into the candidacy for the first group of astronauts, but I didn't make it that time. The Mercury 7. Yeah, the Mercury 7 got in. I, I was one of the last 32, and then the Mercury 7 got there. But then about a couple of years later, they needed more astronauts. And I applied again and made it the second time. For Gemini. Gemini, and then I went on to Apollo. And yeah, but for some mistake, if I'm not mistaken, you know, for Mercury, I mean, originally the scientists, they wanted to use monkeys, no? They didn't want to use well, them, or, yeah. or, you know, was that the case? No? Yeah, I mean, yeah, before they had it, uh, they set up uh, monkeys who probably did a very good job, as a matter of fact. Well, thank God that that person has a, had the vision, because I yeah. can see ourselves, you know, having well, I mean, all respect to the Simians, you know, I don't, I don't see them, you know, doing what you guys do. And uh, what was best, to get the naval wings or to get the NASA wings? Well, I always wanted the naval wings. I didn't know about the NASA wings at the time. And, uh, and of course, uh, after I got the program at, towards the end of 1982, or 1962, I should say, I didn't actually make a flight till 1965, and that was Gemini 7. And after that, I, I guess I got astronaut wings. So they were they're two different things. Going back to the uh, to the Apollo 8 uh, uh, mission, I mean, it had to be scary. I mean, to, when you when you do something uh, uh, new that has never done before, I mean, you were I mean, any slight calculations because not many people realize, but it is the moon's gravity what makes you turn back to Earth. And if you mess up one degree, you end up smashing, becoming part of the moon, a moon crater, or you just float endlessly into space. Uh, what was the most challenging or perhaps frightening moment of that uh, Apollo 8 moment? Well, I think the, the, the one part that was the most uh, uh, nerve uh, rendering was the fact that the engine start again after we were in lunar orbit because we needed the thrust of the, uh, the rocket engine to get us out of lunar orbit and get us on a, on a course back to the Earth. And uh, when you saw the, um, the dark side of the moon again for the first time, and you have no communication with Houston, and you see stars that perhaps have never been seen before, uh, can you describe a little?